enough of you. Confession now!
Well done. anyway.
The Prophet's treatments are intense. I nearly collapsed during the last session. Using the promise of transcendence to lure Prophet Seekers. Shameful. Hands, Cap. Understood. I'll keep my head down.
good enough to be better than everyone. I need to believe I'm better than everyone. Hello. Welcome to the Prophet of Profitability's private prosperity retreat. Stay positive, and soon all your humors will be balanced. Least, that's what I keep telling myself. Uh, anyway, I'm Aaliyah, Aaliyah Mason. I work as the Prophet's right-hand woman. What can I do for you? If you felt imbalanced and non-productive, linger in your malaise no longer. We have all the amenities and practices for calming the ill humors strangling your potential. Sit for hours in our sweat house and sweat them out. Or stand amidst burning coals and feel your productive inhibitions burn away. And remember, think positive. Positivity equals productivity equals profitability. Of course, I've been studying under her for years. I know each of her techniques more or less by heart, and even have some variations of my own, such as the quintuple daily stomach purges. She's promised me that I'd be allowed to open my own branch of the retreat someday soon. Of course, I've been waiting on someday soon for coming up on four years now. I'm sure it's gonna happen any time now? Oh, terribly sorry if I gave you that impression. I had a cramp. It's better now. I mean, it might be nice if I had a little inclination of whether the Prophet appreciated all the cooking and cleaning and hours of meditation I do on a daily basis. But whatever she thinks isn't for me to question. I'll do my best to be more chipper. Oh my. Yes, this is important enough for me to delay my bi-hourly self-flagellation. Ask away. Yes, the circumstances there are quite unfortunate. For a time, the Prophet was completely despondent. Even the hot coal walks weren't buoying her spirits as they usually do. However, we recently had a high-profile visitor whose presence seemed to alleviate whatever the Prophet's fears were. I'm actually not entirely certain. It was a surreptitious visit that stood out because it was surreptitious. Whoever it was must have paid the Prophet quite a lot to keep things quiet. At least that's the only reason I can think of for intentionally keeping things so hush-hush. Well, by and large, no. But something rather odd did happen regarding the Prophet recently. A few hours after our high-profile visitor arrived a couple of days ago, the Prophet asked me to take over sessions for the remainder of the day. At first, I was excited. Thought it was my chance to show her what I could do in charge. But then I saw that she was deeply worried about something. No one saw her until the next day. I was here, at the retreat in the company of the other disciples and clients. I rarely have more than a few minutes of alone time. Which is fine, of course. I do what I do in the service of the Prophet. Who will, I'm sure, reward me for my sacrifice? Eventually? Certainly. Actually, before you go, I want to report something suspicious. I noticed the Prophet's dragging something, a bundle, away from the retreat after that high-profile guest arrived. Normally I'm the one who does her laundry, so it was strange. Especially because whatever she was dragging seemed oddly... human-shaped. I... think so. Had the right size and shape. I could have, but I generally don't have the time or energy to leave the reserve to contact anyone. Plus, there's always the possibility that I'm mistaken. The Prophet hasn't been herself lately, but if I misinterpreted the situation and reported her improperly, I'd ruin my chances for opening my own wing of the retreat. The Prophet says to purge the mind of...
She said I must burn away the old me. Feel myself burning already. Fruitful and productive welcome, brother. I had a feeling you would visit me. I offer a wide variety of productivity seminars. I hope you'll consider taking one. Ah, but I should remember my manners. To what do I owe the pleasure of the special inspector's arrival? My disciples come to and from the Grand Colonial, bringing supplies and information. Knowing what happens at the hotel affects my livelihood, after all. With that said, I'd love to involve you in one of my productivity seminars. We should clear you of all those nasty, nasty humors hampering your potential. Absolutely not. Any statements by Ms. Helen about us were blown out of proportion and altered by the media. In fact, she quite recently... Ah, excuse me. I seem to be remembering something that never happened. Whatever the case, I'm sure her speech about us was all a misunderstanding. We offer a wide variety of seminars for all your corporate needs. Employees not working hard enough, employees dying too often. It's most likely your managerial humors. And of course, seminars for balancing the energies of your business offices. Interior decorating is much more important for success than many would believe. If any of this sounds at all interesting to you, might I interest you in the first 82 words of our most popular seminar's introduction? Free of charge. Byzantines live lives fraught with competition, and that competition can be immensely stressful. You must, first of all, find a way to balance your thinking. Think not of bits lost, but of those you have yet to gain. After all, Peace leads to productivity, and productivity leads to profit. Though thought alone won't balance you. We have a strict regimen to promote humor clearing. Session attendees stand on burning coals, sit for hours in our productivity smokehouse, and of course, fast throughout. Precisely! The barriers within yourself will break down as your skin sweats and blisters, giving the evil humors the proper space to escape. It's my patented method. Oh, really? What did you find there? What did I dump? No, I think you're mistaken. There was nothing there, I suspect. And without evidence, I don't expect to be accosted further. I'm delighted to extend my desire to aid you, brother. 
How might I assist? Who said that? I'll be sure to give them a special seminar on not needlessly implicating the person who puts food on their table. It was a bundle of clothing, brother. Even productivity geniuses need to do laundry from time to time. Hmm, yes. I suppose the more quickly we get off this subject, the better. I had a visitor, yes. But as it turned out, some of my productivity techniques were too much for them. I had to drag them out by hand. But their peers came and collected them shortly thereafter. I'm sure whichever attendee it was is perfectly safe now. Yes, that's correct. She made it clear that my seminars were of no interest to her. Well, I suppose that does complicate things. Whatever the case, I didn't care to mention Helen's change in decision, because she never showed up. I don't see how it matters. Oh? I'm surprised. I wouldn't think the two of us would have much to discuss about her. We may have had some terse interactions before her death, which I most certainly regret. But beyond those... Well, never mind. What would you care to know? I wouldn't necessarily say that. The media tends to exaggerate. I will admit that her remarks about my seminars were rather unfortunate. However, I certainly wouldn't sharpen any sabers over it, if that's what you mean to imply. I only do that when my clients skimp on their bills. I did not. She had no interest in my seminars, and I had no interest in attempting to convert a stubborn actress. <laughs> Why would I have had any cause to engage with her further? Well, I suppose that does complicate things. Whatever the case, I didn't care to mention Helen's change in decision, because... Hmm... Yes. Why, I've been at the Wilderness Exploitation Reserve for quite some time now, as my disciples can attest. In fact, I haven't visited the Colonial since I arrived several weeks ago. <laughs> Bad energies, you understand. I did. Your tone of voice seems to suggest that you have information already. Which also suggests... You've read my terminal. Whatever the case, I did... Hmm... I... Humors? I know all about humors. I needn't be lectured about them by... <clears throat> Forgive me. I take my work very seriously. Whatever the case... Hardline disturbance detected nearby. Analysis suggests this to be a variety of herbs. Herbs have been uniformly treated with a pungent chemical mix. Warning, ingesting, smoking, or inserting non-corporation sanctioned substances into your ears may be harmful to your health. 
Prior analysis suggests these herbs reach peak effectiveness when users burn them and inhale the resulting smoke. Whether or not this increased effectiveness is good for an afflicted individual has yet to be determined. Analyzing complete. Substance appears to be a mix of industrial solvents and various essential oils. Substances include woolly cow dander remover, sprat oil, and starship surface wax. Welcome back, brother. I'm delighted to extend my desire. I'm pleased that you noticed. Excellent eye, brother. The compound they're treated with is my own invention, designed to unlock an individual's true productive potential when burned. I can't say any more. Trade secrets, you know. Clever work, Inspector. It seems even I can't slide my way out of the trap you've so intricately weaved. I admit it. I killed Helen. By mistake. Helen changed her mind and wanted to attend one of my sessions. I, knowing the importance of the seminar, desired to truly galvanize her. Though not to stop her heart. So when it came time... I chose to double Helen's dosage of productivity-enhancing herbs. I left her to meditate, and when I returned, she was dead. After that, I entered a... less than coherent state. One of my disciples, it seems, witnessed me as I dragged Helen's body out into the wilderness. Do you jest? The guests at the Colonial eat no shortage of strange things, but I think corpses are perhaps too strange. The creatures of the wilderness are much less picky. Besides, the hotel is ridiculously far. I couldn't have made it all that way without someone realizing I was dragging a corpse. Laws? No. I hate guns. If I ever wanted to kill someone on purpose, I would have used a blunt weapon. Nothing quite like clubbing someone over the head. I'm no medical professional, but that certainly seemed the case. Usually my customers at least writhe or mumble after a session. My productivity-enhancing herbs typically do induce sluggishness. But I suppose they must have been enough to do her in, if her constitution was truly that weak. What? Is this some kind of joke? You're an inspector. It's your job to arrest me, isn't it? No. Someone must have moved it after I killed her. One of my business rivals, waiting for me to fall into a false sense of security so they can strike! I don't believe you. I think this is all a trick. You're trying to... to catch me in a lie. Get me to reveal my productivity secrets! No. You can't trick me. I finally discovered what's happening. You've been paid off. Someone else learned that I killed Helen, and is going to use that information to blackmail me. You think I'm going to let this injustice happen? Ha! Tell the constable that I killed Helen. It's a thousand times less miserable than whatever my enemies have planned. You monster! What am I supposed to do now? They'll be here soon, and once they arrive, I'll be powerless. Powerless! I just want to go to prison! Is that so wrong?
finger a man of the cloth. Excellent to see you again, my friend. Hope you've been keeping your head high. What are these? Research data pads? Hmm. Not quite what I expected. Let's see what they say. Hmm. Parasites, caves, thought control. He did what now? Well, it doesn't look like any of this is in violation, but it is disturbing. And disturbing a surprised auditor is as foul as failing to file proper paperwork. Rizzles shall pay dividends for my psychological damage. Here's your reward, my friend. Your contributions to the field of surprise auditing shall not go forgotten. Why do I get the distinct impression someone's trying to stop us?
Inspector. Ms. Leva earned that title, but not for the reasons you'd expect. The profit business has been profitable for the hotel. Not so much for Ms. Leva's followers. So, tell me, what did you find? She wants to be arrested. That's not the kind of behavior I expect from a suspect. Perhaps she's carrying a guilty conscience. Does the Prophet strike you as a reasonable candidate for Helen's murderer? I'll bear that in mind. Thank you for the update, Inspector. I'll include everything you've told me in my official report. Oh, and let me give you some advice. Look into Cedric Kincannon. He's hiding something. I'm sure of it. Hope you've been enjoying your stay. Rizzo, purple berry fudge. Inspector, glad you're back. Thank you for being so patient with slug activity. I hope you'll forgive the delay. Welcome to the Piraeus Spaceport. Hey, you! We've been looking for you, and by we, I mean Slug. Been real busy sniffing around Eridanos for clues, haven't you, Inspector? See, Slug Light Underground don't like that much. Slug Light? Would that be some form of bioluminescence? No? Nothing? Should have kept your nose where it belonged, Inspector. Slug's sick of all your meddling in their affairs. Our affairs, I mean. Whip! Draw, you damn breadworm! Draw! What? Why ain't you doing nothing? You scared of us? Huh? Huh? I'm sorry. We're sorry. Please don't hurt us. We're not bad people. We're just uh, confused. I 
I don't need to tell us twice. Uh, come on, all. Let's get the hell out of here. If I made a bet with you at the Copper Bottom last night, let's call it off now. I can't stand the taste of life's brats. Greetings, criminals. This unit would implore you to confess to your crime of Landing with an expired permit. Please explicate your defense into this unit's recording equipment. My permit wasn't expired, Scrap Heap. You probably just scanned it wrong. Error. Unit's permit reading equipment was updated only last week. Please tell a different lie. Tell a different... You're a mechanical. You ain't got the foggiest idea whether I'm telling the truth or not. Correct. Criminal. However, Constable Keen has decreed that this unit will remain here, questioning you every minute until you submit a confession. Error. Information on recent exchange lost. Restarting. Conversation. Greetings, criminal. This unit would implore you to confess to your crime of landing with an expired permit. You know what? My permit was fake after all. Uh, let me out of here. Oh no, it's the constable. She was a good sort. She didn't deserve this. Must have gotten too close to the truth for the killer's liking. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. An aberration in the expected timeline for this organic being has occurred. Behold, the body of Maria Keane, formerly the constable of the Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. No signs of life detected. Maria Keen is survived by no known relatives. Excellent observation, Inspector. Multiple wounds located in the frontal bone and between the clavicle suggest she was facing away from her attacker. Furthermore, the location and circumference of exit wounds suggest a firearm with unconventional ammunition. Yes, Inspector. These entry wounds match the profile previously detected on the Rizzo's Ranger's mascot. Constable Maria Keane was likely killed by someone wielding the Needler.
These casings are too minuscule for conventional small caliber firearms. Each casing resembles a lancing needle used for medical and surgical purposes. High concentration of potassium chloride detected. Trace amounts of neurotoxin detected. These substances show the highest concentration near the entry and exit wounds. Cardiac arrest, rather than physical trauma, is the most likely cause of death. Your memo has been noted. This unit has been programmed to offer encouragement during moments of emotional strain. Better protocol activated. We'll find the Sprat Bastards responsible, Inspector. Greetings, non-criminally associated individual. The Rizzo's Constabulary is currently not closed due to a spread infestation. Bureaucratic processes are currently suspended. At present, criminal reports do not require paperwork. Please lament only in marked lamentation Zones. Please speak clearly into this unit's recording instruments. Understood. This unit requires a moment to process this information. Information processed. 
personal designation upgraded to acting constable. Thank you, law-abiding consumer. This unit concurs with your inference. Unapprehended killers are likely to continue killing. This unit has been programmed to adhere to board law. This unit is incapable. This unit has been programmed to recommend a wine to pair with your grief. Wash away your sorrow. Purple berry wine has a body richer than Byzantium's elite with an earthy aftertaste. I'm a criminal, get it? They don't let me talk to law-abiding sorts. Reminds me of a rose, just a bit. Hello, welcome to Aridano's Dry Goods and Sundry, the most standard and unremarkable general store this side of Halcyon. I'm Marketeer Joseph Dempsey, here to make your shopping experience as pleasant and normal as possible. Hey, folks take a lot of comfort in knowing their neighborhood general store is unchanging, eternal, like the land beneath their feet or the air in their lungs. Whoops, forgot I ain't supposed to poeticize on work time. The drab nature of our store profits is what I meant. Now, can I sell you anything? to make of sublight underground or slug i guess i can't shake the feeling they had something to do with miss helen's death
got an appointment? Appointment? Yeah, that's why you're here. Appointment? Hmm. Not entirely out of the question. Convince me. Wouldn't mind a new bolter pistol. I've fired mine so many times the tips nearly fell off. Let's give Mr. Kincannon a ring. Mr. Kincannon, got a person of interest here to see you. I think they've got business. That sounds like our inspector. Please send him up. What the? We're in the future of stuff like this, you wait and see. Cursory fingerprint analysis shows this display case was recently opened or closed. Confirmed. The grip has been modified for a specific wielder, most likely the rifle's owner. Additionally, the plasma rifle sights appear to have been realigned to better accommodate a shooter with slight myopia in one eye. The fingerprints belong to Cedric Kincannon. Admiring my rifle. Had it custom fitted by a woman on Monarch. Why, if it isn't the inspector, I was hoping you'd swing by. Here for my alibi, I assume. Another murder? Drunk raptidons? Black hole birdie practicing his hacking in the middle of the street? Uh, stop me if it's one of those, or I'll just keep guessing. Sounds as though you've already sorted it out yourself. Slug uniforms do seem to go missing from the hotel laundry with impressive regularity. Easy enough for someone to nick a few. Now ask yourself this. Why would anyone give thugs slug gear and send them after you? Right again, Inspector. But I can't fathom who would benefit from tarnishing my reputation like that. Can you? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult your intelligence. I'm used to working with Lou, you see? I hope you won't hold it against me. So, as you've deduced, I did not send anyone from Slug after you, nor is it likely they assigned themselves that task. Still, I am sorry for the trouble, Inspector. With well, that settled, I assume you'll want to know where I was the night of Helen's murder. Let's see. That night, I was... Ah, torturing Elliot Nasser for information on missing cargo. 
That was a messy one. Didn't break until nearly noon the next day. Can you imagine? An excellent question. I had his body dropped off the edge of the land complex. I'm not sure what happened to it from there, scientifically speaking. Maybe it dissolved? Ultimately, though, it doesn't matter. You'd be a fool to believe me, regardless of what I told you. People lie, and I am, incriminatingly, people. Which, as I said, you should not trust. If it helps, however, you might consider pursuing not my means, but my motive. Why in the name of the Architect would I kill Halcyon Helen? She was making me a fortune. I'm considering a line of commemorative merchandise. Still, that's nothing compared to what Helen would have made us in the long run. I'd offer to assist you in your work, but I have a mystery of my own to solve, I'm afraid. You may very well want to. This particular trouble strikes me as not unrelated to your investigation. Items are disappearing from slug storage and processing warehouse. The thefts began a week before Helen's unfortunate death, and there have been more instances since. <laughs> before you ask, I know the difference between cargo going missing and cargo going missing. This is the latter. I'm not sure. I'm only confident there is one. That the thefts began mere days before Helen's untimely demise is an extraordinary coincidence. I'm not a man who believes in happenstance, Inspector. I do not trust it. I certainly wouldn't take that bet. Regardless, this will be fun. You out in the field, chasing down leads, me scheming in my office, preparing to unspeakably mangle the perpetrator. <laughs> You do recall, Inspector, that I'm not to be trusted? But certainly, whatever you say. You'll want to speak with Ella Tinsley, the warehouse foreman. I've cleared her as a suspect myself, but should she refuse to cooperate, shoot her. <laughs> no, I'm joking. If she won't cooperate, tell me and I will shoot her. And do feel free to search my office for clues while you're here. Don't hold back on my account. Was there something else you wanted to discuss? Constable Keene? Now that is a damn shame. Am I right to think this wasn't a workplace accident? No, I played no role in the good constable's death. None, I'm flummoxed. I'd nearly forgotten how that feels. It's quite unpleasant. Thank you for informing me of Constable Keene's passing. When you find her killer, please be certain to make them suffer. We may have been on opposite sides of the law on occasion, but we were not enemies. Perhaps it will shock you to hear her loss saddens me. Maria was a decent soul. And law knows those are in short supply around here. A little square, perhaps, <laughs> in her dedication to the rules, but good nonetheless. I'm also saddened to have lost an occasional drinking buddy. She was quite good at cards, you know. No, she didn't. But let's discuss something else. Do you have other matters requiring my attention? The original incident? Well, I made him an offer he should have refused. An excellent deduction, Inspector. Our combative relationship stems from paperwork, mundanely enough. Rizzo's contracted sublight to construct the Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. Had Lou wanted Rizzo's to retain full control of Eridanos, he shouldn't have skimmed the revised contract I sent him. 
Lose an administrator, for law's sake. I thought he would adore all the fine print I added. Still technically visible to the human eye, but only just. You're quite good at this. It was all perfectly legal, too, which irked Lou to no end. My power grab, as Lou called it, planted the seed of hatred. And Lou, obsessed with what should have been, has made sure to water it daily with his bitterness and anger. <laughs> oh, I'm not an innocent party here. Please don't think I'm claiming to be. Provoking Lou may be fun, but I do have my reasons. Slug's control of Eridanos is a crucial step in my long-term plans for Sublight. The board needs to see irrefutable proof we are a respectable, legitimate business. <laughs> oh, that does sound fun, though. Is securing a board seat for Sublight evil enough? Surely we can at least agree that it's grand. Meanwhile, our dear administrator is still laser-focused on old slice, which can be a nuisance. He's grown increasingly desperate to catch Slug with our hand in the proverbial cookie jar as of late, convinced we're involved in less than legal business opportunities. Continue investigating, Inspector. I'm afraid you'll find both you and Ludovico will be disappointed in that regard. Very well. A few. Helen was strangely curious about the private business operations around Eridanos. She said it was role research. But how much business know-how does one actor truly need for an action picture? I also arranged to have Helen supplied with mag picks, bypass shunts, and other hacking tools. She wanted to buy in bulk. Because she paid me to, Inspector. Besides, Helen was enjoyable company. She was confident, resourceful, determined. Not unlike you, now that I consider it. That is the question, isn't it, Inspector? Tell me, do you really believe Helen's death was a mere crime of passion? Or one of petty career jealousy? Hmm? A smart approach, Inspector. And yet... This murder is bigger than Miss Helen's personal life. Bigger than her latest moving picture. Her actions in the time leading up to her death do not align with those of an actor on Eridanos solely to promote Spectrum Brown. Stay sharp, Inspector. Now is not the time to lose focus. Because whoever did kill Helen is not going to come forward so easily. I might. I just might. Your point, Inspector? Understood. I hope your suspicions prove useful in uncovering the truth. Be very careful, Inspector. I'd very much like to see you still around for the grand finale. Whenever it comes, whatever shape it takes. One moment, if you please, Inspector. I've answered your questions. I believe it's my turn to ask you a question now. What, or who, made you decide to investigate me? Understandable. A man of my standing would naturally be tied up in all this, whether he wishes to be or not. Now then, did you need anything else 